Hey guys, welcome back, and we are here with part three of painting this Miss BB here. That's her name. But uh, if you're just getting here, you're in part three, you probably need to go to part one. So I'm going to drop a card. It'll appear up here on the left hand, or this side of your screen right here, so that you can click on it. It'll chop up a little eye. And if you click that eye, it'll have a link and take you straight to part one, so you guys can get to part one. And check that out but anyway let's get on with it guys all right so we are picking back up where we left off and I have mixed up a little bit of a dirty gray color here that color is a little bit on the brownish side and it was made with a sepia and I believe a violet tone mixed with the sepia to give me that grayish color I'm not a hundred percent sure what mix I used at the time I just know that I mixed up that dirty gray that was in a way that was satisfied and these are transparent so it's not opaque there's no whites in there at this point and so I'm going to fill in the spots the really really dark spots and I'm going to use that blackbeard wheat for accent and edging I will also take that blackbeard wheat and use that to tone up and make my blends as they come in off of the outside edge Notice when I use that blackbeard weed, it gives me some of those darker structures with inside the hair. Um, you know, that just, there's, those can be done by hand, but there's just that blackbeard weed. If you lay it out properly and spread it out properly, and you don't have to use blackbeard wheat, you could use something else. And for those of you who are wondering and been watching this and ask, wanting to know about blackbeard wheat, you get that in the floral section. Um, it's a dried floral and you pick up a big bundle of it for like five bucks uh use it a lot on these little finer hairs and things like that i just love it for um you know those fine type hairs and creating those sort of uh, you know breaks in the hairline you can see as i'm using it there and you got to kind of play around with that off you know you're painting a few times to kind of get the hang of it but you'll realize that there's much more versatile than you would think. Coming in here and putting some of those dark spots, some of that grayish hair that's in this existing in the fur. Also using it to darken in around a few spots and using it to darken in some shadows around that bow. You're also gonna see me use that same exact mix on top of the blue um, of the jersey that the the animal that bb here is wearing once again see what i'm talking about the way it creates those textures that are just random textures that are really hard to come by got a near black mix in here now it's got a little bit of red violet in there we're gonna come in here we're gonna fill in those eyes um nothing crazy here because those eyes are mostly um devoid of any real work so we're going to fill those in and we're going to use that to blend out on the outside we'll of course pull back out that black beer wheat again and put some of those little structures that come out where the hair enters into the eye socket and of course i'm filling in the nose with this darker color and then doing making sure that i'm paying attention to the shape and structure of the nose the lighter portions and we'll come back do a little more work with that as well it's important to notice with those nostrils that you are deepening in very dark to the inside of the nostrils but then it needs to blend out so that you don't want any harsh shape and edge on there again using the black beer wheat around and that's you know pretty common with animals that you'll have that short section of really dark hair coming out blending off into the normalized color um, so if you hadn't paid attention up to this point you may have noticed that I mostly have worked light to dark all the way through this painting and even though I'm working some transparents now now I can come up with transparents if I need to and tint and tone around and I could even use lighter transparents if I need to but when you're working with the opaques the opaques 
you want to work light to dark, prevent any blue shift if possible. There are times that you may not be able to do that and there are workarounds for that. And that'll be along in other videos and I've had it in some other videos in the past as well. Notice how I just used that, just gently shaded around the outside edge of that eye. <clears throat> just put a little bit of that color in there. Then I'm gonna come back and start cleaning up with an eraser and scratching and erasing techniques here shortly. We're gonna work around the entire picture. We're going to check our values repeatedly against our reference and continue to scratch out a few things. We've of course got to build this entire grayish structure that comes in on the left hand side of the face or her right hand side of the face, our left hand side of the screen to the left of the nose. All of that structure has to be done, <clears throat> but it's only gonna take a couple of layers and it's gonna go through that actually really quickly. You got a few small and short hairs in there, but then you've got some longer hairs that'll draw out. And working around that eye, you'll see how you get those little short, tiny hairs out of there. And then there's sections. Of course, you know, this all is dependent upon your exact image. The long hair from this dog is one way that we're gonna approach this, and it's approached entirely differently with other types of fur. I'm gonna have some more videos on fur, uh, different types, curly types, short hair types. Um, I really like these long flowy furs to work with. Um, they're really nice to, you can do some really dramatic changes with it. And it's really much easier to work with some of the other ones. The short hair fur is really hard to make any personal changes to the picture um, just because of the density of the short furs. But you know, there's some things you can do with that with coloring, but there's not a lot you can do in changing the direction of flow or anything like that. Well, you don't want to change the direction of flow much. Obviously, I've made it very important that you pay attention to your direction of flow. But there are some small and minor changes you can do. You can clean up that hair, make it a little bit less messy if you want to sometimes. And you can also make it a little more messy if you think that it's, you know, too sterile looking. Of course, we're working in with the grays on the bottom and on the left-hand side, as I pointed out before, and now you'll see how I'm coming over the top of some of that red clothing and things that are below, and that is why I made the decision to put that red in first, so now that we're able to come over the top of it. But I want to continuously work around my entire image, but mostly I am going to work on the grays in this portion, even though I'm spending a little bit of time on the others. And then we're going to bring those out. And the important thing at this stage is to just simply pay attention to your values. Since we are working with transparent, what you don't want to do is lay it in there at full opacity, as dark as you can, as quick as you can, because that's going to be entirely too quick or too dark. Obviously still cleaning up on a little bit of the brown tones around and then I'm going to get back into this gray section, but as you see, as I was pointing out before, I'm able to work, you know, painting. That way I'm not reaching for my erasing and then reaching for my airbrush, swapping back and forth tools and do as much as I can in one fell swoop. Now, with that said, that doesn't work great on every single surface. The cool thing about gesso board is it's just as easy to erase 10 minutes later as it is to erase when you first lay it out or just within a minute or so after you lay it out. Gesso is very forgiving in that, in that it is slightly absorbent, so it absorbs the paint and holds it really well, which is another reason you see my hands, you know, constantly wiping stuff off and I don't have to worry about accidentally rubbing any scratches into it. While it's still fairly easy to scratch back and erase back, it's not so easy to scratch back that you accidentally cause nicks and scratches in your work, which one of the complaints I have in working on um, some of the, the synthetic papers that are out there, such as UPO and a couple others that are out there that I just won't even get into naming. I have that same problem. Terra Slate's the only one that I know of that holds paint like a gesso board does. And now you see, obviously, I am with the red, violet, and black mix right now, 
and you'll see that I'm running it off into that jersey so I'm creating some of those tapes those sh shadows and form inside that jersey but I'm also using it back again on the dog as I work on this bottom section as I was talking about I'm bringing it over the other colors that were existing underneath it and now we're mostly working in gray shades All right, so we have changed up the color a little bit. This color has a little bit more brown in it than the color that we were running in a short while ago. And then I'm going to be blending out the edges of that hair. And as you can see, I'm back to blending everything over the neckerchief or whatever it is that exists on the bottom left-hand side. And notice that we got some of them brown tones in there. and this color won't show up in the reference photo that I had and that's because that was we were talking about that being overblown so this color is a little bit darker and it's once again it is in a transparent so it's a little bit lighter than those dark grays but because of it's transparent I really unless I just got crazy in there I can get over those darks just a little bit and it won't show up and it'll blend together so we're allowing things to start mixing together once again is important to note no matter how many times I repeat it it's still just as true now as it was the first time I said it um, putting in those basic general directions of flow and doing a lot of that work with the airbrush we're toning in all of those sections that need that coloring you see how because it's transparent how I can go over that hair that was too white on the background right there and notice that as long as you're working light like that and you're working transparently notice it didn't really affect the background whatsoever as you can see the hair over the top on the right hand side above the bow um, you back up if you need to and see exactly what I did which was color that in I threw a little bit tied a little of that brown tone into that eye even though that's not um, probably seems counterintuitive but uh, that does have just a little bit of that brown reflecting a little of that brown from the elements and surrounding colors back into the eyeball and we're going to still do a little bit more work with the eyeball but not much and of course we will start doing a little bit more scratching out and erasing shortly to finish tying those structures and shapes in notice what i'm using there is not anything that's harsh i'm using a the back side it's one of them erasers you put on the back side of a pencil which allows me to erase softly you don't have to use those erasers i just picked some up the other day because i was, thought they might be handy and i'm trying to use them around and put incorporate using them in my paintings and decide whether i like them or not because the erasers that i use the pencil erasers i use are a little more aggressive and sometimes I like that much more soft erasing. It might be handy to not have to keep my regular soft eraser around and just keep that on the back side of my pencil eraser. Obviously, at this point, I decided I need to get a little bit of a sharper line, so I used back to the more aggressive pencil eraser, which is a typewriter eraser. I have a bunch of these new old stock typewriter erasers that I use that I picked up. I bought a hundred of them some time back, sold a few to some friends, and kept uh, probably 30 or 40 of them for myself. So I've got a pretty good stock of them. Putting in those highlights around the eyes, you can see right there, nothing I'm doing here going, you know, crazy. And I would speed up this video faster, but I really want you guys to be able to see what I'm doing. So I don't have a whole lot to point out at this particular moment. This is a stage in which I'm going through looking at the entire picture and you know one of the reasons I'm able to work fast is because I'm not working in and trying to hone in on an individual little detail versus I am working my entire picture and when I say that it literally means that 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 I am looking at the entirety of the picture and getting the general guideline of the reference 
instead of getting fixated on the small details. If you get fixated on the small details, you'll be there a long time. Um, you know, and that's what true photorealism is, is when you fixate on those small details and take it to that extreme step of focusing in on every little hair and thing being in the correct place. And while that has its place, I rarely paint 100% photorealistically like that. I do not have the time to do so, um, nor do I have a customer base that's willing to pay me for the hours it would take me. If I had to do 100% photorealism, my paintings would have to start at around $1,000 to make it worth the time that I have to invest in that. And I don't show to charge anywhere near $1,000 for a small painting like this. Um, not even, yeah, not even close to $1,000 for a small painting like this. And, and that's what I would have to charge if I was putting in that, you know, 20 to 30 hours on this image. The entire time it took me to paint this image um, from start to finish was about three hours is what it took me. Now, I'm not saying that you should be able to do this in three hours. Um, what I'm saying is that's the time it took me. I have a lot of experience painting pets at this point, so I'm getting faster and faster at them as time goes by. And over time, you start learning the things that you can leave out and the things that you can leave in or that you need to absolutely focus on. That is a skill in itself to find the things that are absolutely critical to be perfect and finding the things that really don't matter as much. And once you start playing around with some of those pictures like that, you know, you'll start figuring that out. Obviously, see, I'm coming through with my fiberglass eraser a whole lot. And, you know, at this stage, we are just and really close to the cleanup. I'm going to use a little bit more of that brown tone, and I will gently come around with the brown tone here and there, touching it up, blending it all together. Um, and as you know, my, my final picture is a little bit, this one's really much closer to the reference look than my final picture, and that's because I knew that the a reference was a little bit too overblown so you know I could have in imitated that exact reference but I think they wound up with a better painting by me making the right choices you can see that color on the left hand side that I'm working with a little bit of a brown transparent also notice I uh, took a little bit of white and I glazed over those eyes just a little bit and that gives them a little bit of touch of texture and then I came back and touched up some spots in the eyes or the nose and that uh, blue shift over the over the black will give me that perfect bluish gray that I'm looking for okay guys and y'all saw it we are done so Hopefully y'all got a little bit out of this tutorial, three parts long, a uh, total of about an hour's worth of video. I hope that helps out a lot. Um, it's funny because every time I make one of these videos, there's always somebody who is like, hey man, that doesn't look very good. Are you sure you're going to be able to get that done? And I'm like, did you not see the picture in the beginning where I showed you what it looks like in the end? Anyway, people are funny like that. Well, we appreciate you guys coming by here. And I don't really have anything else for y'all today. I just appreciate y'all stopping by. And thank you a lot. Y'all have a good one. Bye.